channel. My name is Joanne, and I want to talk to you about colorism. I want to talk to you about and share some of my experiences, and I wanted to get your opinion. You know, I grew up and I had a father who was from New Orleans, Louisiana, and my mom's family from Baltimore, Maryland. And I want to find out if any of you guys, especially as dark-skinned women, have been exposed to any type of colorism. You know, growing up, I used to hear things like on my father's side about, oh, you're so pretty, but you're so dark. Or you're pretty for a dark-skinned girl. And I remember that kind of did a number on me because growing up, I used to think it was something wrong with my complexion. And in the summertime, I didn't want to show like my legs or my arms. I would cover it up, be hot as all get out in the summertime, but I didn't want to show my arms. I thought it was too dark. There was something wrong with me. And I remember feeling so inadequate. But one great thing is on my mother's side, they never talked about complexion and dark skin, light skin. It was never a topic. And um, thank God I had that balance because I got to see what proud dark skin people, how they moved, how they worked, how they didn't think about that. And when I realized it was other people's issues and not mine, then I was able to get comfortable in my own skin. But it took a long time to get there. A real long time and I remember growing up being in my early 20s going out with my friends and everything I would always find myself being the last one to even be asked to dance you know being asked to boogie I used to love to dance but it never failed it always went like my girlfriends because they were like lighter skin and then finally I would be asked to dance but then once people realized that I liked to dance and I was a good dancer, then, okay, I stayed on the dance floor. But that kind of stuff kind of bothered me, too. And I don't even know if my friends even knew what I was going through and how I felt and how insecure I really was. And how it took me a long time to get good and feel good in the skin that I'm in. And I even remember um, after having my daughter, my firstborn, and uh, my grandmother, who was from the South, my father's side, she used to stay in the house all the time. You know, she got older, wasn't feeling well. And uh, when she found out, had her first great-grandchild, my daughter, the first thing out of her mouth, what do you think it was? She wanted to know what type of hair did she have? Did she have good hair? I don't even know what the heck that means. When her complexion. And I was just so pissed off. That's your first question, really? You didn't want to know if she was healthy, how I was feeling, how the baby was doing. You wanted to know her complexion and the type of hair she had. So, of course, me being me, I said, ooh, grandmother, she is black as the tire on the car. Now, mind you, this only this woman only went out of her house when she had to go to the doctors, maybe run a few errands to the grocery store. When I tell you about two hours passed and I hear her coming up the hallway, my cousin had brought her, where am my grandbaby at? I want to see her. She literally had to come to that hospital to see what complexion my daughter was. Now, my daughter was pale with freckles. It kind of tripped me out, too. If I wouldn't have been awake, I wouldn't have thought she was mine either. With freckles? I'm like, black folks with freckles? Okay, all right, all right. But she came in that room. And she was like, let me see the baby. Let me see the baby. And she was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Her hair was straight black and she was all pale with the freckles. And she was just praising God. And of course, I got mad at my grandmother. And I was like, I can't believe that's the first thing you want to talk about. And she tried to backtrack, but that was her main concern. And again, my other grandmother on my mother's side never once wanted to know how I felt if the baby was healthy, and things like that. So my question is, is that just a generational thing? Is that just a Southern thing? They get caught up on complexion. Because I even remember growing up and my cousins, my younger cousins, would be fussing back and forth and they were talking about, I'm brown. No, I'm brown. Uh-uh, you black. Uh-uh, you black. And I'm used to be like what in the world so again that made me think something was wrong with me because I was darker 
in complexion than they were. So again, it was something wrong with being dark skinned. I, you know, and my heart goes out to especially young women that go through this because it took me a long time to get to a comfortable place to accept the skin that I am and then understand it's not me. Whoever got an issue with my complexion, that's their issue. Doesn't have anything to do with me. But, I, you know, is that still something going on? Because even maybe about a couple years ago, I had a conversation with a close family member. I'm not going to put them on blast. But they were sharing they, that they really wanted to date. And so I asked them, what type of young lady are you interested in? First thing out of his mouth was light skin with long hair. Really? That's what we're talking about. Now you forget you're talking to me though, right? And then it was like, no, 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 it's way it ain't like that. But that was what came out of his mouth. Light skin with long hair. Not that he that the person would be a good person, that she would be a God-fearing person, love her family, honest person, hardworking person. Your thing was light skin with long hair. Hell, anybody can have long hair these days. Just buy some. But that's still a thing. And here we are in 2021. That's still a thing. And it's more painful when you feel like this prejudice coming from your own folks. Now, I want to know, too, another question I have, and maybe you can leave it in the comments, is that other races have the same issue. Do they have the same concerns or are treated differently because they're darker shade? That's another question I have, and maybe you guys can let me know. But when I tell you, when I think when I got to my 40s, perhaps, that's when I truly start getting comfortable in my own skin. And I really hope by me doing this video, it would help a young girl to accept who she is far earlier than it took me to accept me. I just, is this something that's still happening? I believe so. I believe a lot of times, you know, and as African American, we are one to be followed in stores. We are one that they feel that we're a threat. And it seemed like when you're darker skin, the darker your skin, the bigger the threat that people see you. And, you know, you grow up and you become accustomed to certain people treating you a certain kind of way. But again, when it comes from your own, that's a heavy pill to swallow. So I just had to jump on here because it, I thought about how much time I wasted feeling so insecure and feeling like I wasn't enough. That it was something wrong with the skin that God blessed me with. I'm gonna tell you like the doctors tell their patients, a little dark chocolate is always good for the heart. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share, comment, and subscribe. And remember, every time you wake up, it's always a beautiful day. I'll see you soon, bye.